St. John, chapter 9, verse 29 to 41 means the ones that don't see but are hungry for God will see. And the one that they receive that see, they see, they don't, they, they're going to stay behind. All because they, they will not take acknowledge God. It's God in everything. So the message today again, the hidden gospel. But why? The, the reason that I'm, this message I'm preaching it again is that hopefully it will do something for you. The reason that I'm preaching it again is because some of you did not understand the magnitude of it. Okay? So again, we're going to go over it. Okay. Why are people blind? Okay. Why? Now, you need to listen here. Why are people, the Bible says, in Matthew 24, which I did not quote last week, verse uh, um, uh, 3, the disciples went to him privately and asked him about what he said in front of a bunch of people. They asked them privately, when shall these things be? What will be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? And then the place is that Peter said, and I'll probably read it, why are you speaking to people in parable? Why are you speaking for them to understand? So now, here's number one reason that people don't, don't understand. He said, he answers and said, it is given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. It's given to the people that are hungry. If you're hungry for God, God's going to manifest himself to you. God will. This week I went witnessing in Winnipeg. And I was able to tell the, the person this person is hungry for God. This woman that I talked to has been born again for 20 years. But when I talked to her, I told her, you don't believe nothing. You don't believe. So I said, you don't believe and you're listening to the devil. But I said, you've got one thing going for you. I don't get if the person that sits in church and claims to be a Christian is not hungry for God, that's a person that is a dangerous and a very sad state to be in. But it doesn't matter how wicked you are. If you're hungry for God, you're in good shape. Because you can't help where you are. God, I said to the woman, why don't you ask God, say, Lord, will in me thy good pleasure, O Lord? I can't do it. I'm useless. But will it in me, Lord? Will in me thy good pleasure. So, going back to why people are blind. You're not hungry. It all boils down to the example of God don't mean nothing to them. That's why they're not hungry. And that's why the gospel is hidden from them. Okay? <clears throat> now, Israel has, God has a bit of a different plan, but all because they do not hunger for God. They wanted to do their own thing and believe what they want to believe and not believe God. So what did God do? God blinded the Israelites. Blinded them. Until the fullness of the Gentiles will come. And then they will be saved. The Bible says the books will be opened to them. And then you've got the backsliders. And don't this have noticed this all my life. Then you have people that truly were born again, truly were called by God, and has gone back and became unfruitful. Then the word of God becomes lying. Yeah. 
they cannot see. It's a hidden gospel. They are going to it. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's look here at Romans 11, verse 7. And probably I'll give you that verse last week, but I'll give it to you again. What then? Israel has not obtained that which it seek for. Listen, a lesson to you. Israel has not obtained what they're seeking for. So there is a Christian on earth now that they will not, they, they will try to make it and will not make it. Strive to enter at the straight gate, for straight is the gate that narrows the way, and few will there be that finds it. So they're looking for it, but they will not find it. And the reason is because they don't want to turn their life to God. They don't want to surrender their life to God, and that's why they cannot find the way. They won't have it both ways, and it don't work. And here, look what it says. Israel was, now what then? Israel had not obtained that which it seeks. So they were looking for it, but they never got it. Because they want to do this, cover the head. They did not obtain what they were looking for. But the election, the election, who would that be? That's us. But the election has obtained it. And the rest of them were, the rest of them are all blind. You see this? So you're either going to walk in the light, and you're going to believe in the gospel, or you're going to walk in darkness, and you're going to be blind. So hopefully this week will help you. <clears throat> People that backslide or don't grow are not growing. The gospel will be hidden to them. Anyone that does not grow is walking in the flesh and they will be blind to the gospel. They won't have a clue but the, and they still think they're right. And you know what? That's a very dangerous place to be. Praise the Lord for them. Last week I mentioned to you about your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay? I gave it to you last week, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. So, so the name, your name was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you know if your name is, if you're hidden, if the gospel is not open to you, it's a hidden gospel, you're not wrong being drawn by God because of whatever reason. One day, when the trumpet will sound, you will go and look if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And your name will not be found. Why? Because you went by your feeling, you went by your dead flesh, you went by what you think, and when you're going to want to hope that you made it, you're going to go and check and your name will not be found. For the name not to be found, somebody must be looking for his name to see if it's there, but it will not be there. <clears throat> Praise the Lord forevermore. Uh, that was verse 14, in case you're looking for that verse. Revelation 20 was... Uh, 14 and 15. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Now, St. John, chapter 7, verse 17. If you're hungry for God, this is anybody here. And then I'm going to talk about the Word of God coming alive to you. Okay? If you are hungry for God, there is no way the gospel can be hidden from you. There is impossible. So there's a man that came to me since that message was preached and said to me, well, how come, you know, I'm going through a hard time. When I talked about some people in Sodom and Gomorrah in the last days, it looks like they're going to live in the day of uh, uh, in the day of judgment. People will be there, and that person said to me, "How come 
I've been going through a hard time in my life, and why should the same thing, they didn't do nothing, and they get the same thing as me? Well, of course, that will not happen. They don't get the same reward as me, right? And number, number two, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're going to make it. The Bible says that God will, will be able to tolerate them more. Who's going to make it? Only God knows that. Praise the Lord. St. John chapter 7, verse 17. If any man will do his, his will, he shall, and he shall know the doctrine. If you love God and you do, do his will, you will know the doctrine. So therefore, the gospel will not be hidden to you then. For you to know the doctrine of God, to know his plan, it's not hidden from you. I'm telling you, God is true. Oh, I'm telling you, when the Lord told me years ago, when you walk into a place, Jesus will be walking into that place. Well, of course, he, he is in me, in the new man. And the new man reveals everything. The new man reveals everything. And when you will understand the new man inside of you, and you, this new man, Jesus lives in it. And I'll tell you something. He will do the will. This inner man will do the will of the Father. This inner man will tell you when to pray for somebody. This inner man will tell you the deep secret, the mystery of the Word of God. This inner man, when you go and visit people, you can cast out devil because it's the inner man. Not this one. It's the inner man that casts out the devil. When I walk into a place, it's Jesus that walk into a place. If a person needs to see, they will see. If they need to be set free, they will be set free. Why? Because it's Jesus, not me. So when you witness to somebody, tell them what kind of church you do. That was my question to the churches when they asked me to go to their church. I'm looking for a church that the gospel has been preached. And see, he said, and when John the Baptist, when, and when John the Baptist sent his disciple uh, to ask the, when Jesus, yeah, John the Baptist sent two men to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah or should we go for another one. And John the Baptist was a man of God. Get that out of your mind in case you think he wasn't. Look what Jesus said. He said, you go tell to John the Baptist, the lame walk, the blind see, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. He's not talking about people with no money in their pocket. The poor in the heart, blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And who is here today? The poor. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And this is what God called me for, and that's what God called you for. If any man will do his will, never mind asking yourself a question, well, am I going to get the same reward? He says, and agreed with me to build me a house for a certain amount of money. He agreed to that. I agreed to it, he agreed to it. Now, let's pretend a year after you made me that agreement, I made the same agreement with somebody else, but I paid him double. And he, he gets a hold of that. He says, why did you, why are you paying double and then you only give me that? I said, listen, did you not agree to work for that? He says, yeah. Well, why are you mad at me? Have I done any evil with my money? If I decide to give double to somebody else? And this is God. I agree with you to have eternal life. I agree to work in the vineyard and the promise of God, he would give me eternal life if I did not want him. But Philip doesn't do very much and he gets the same thing. Okay, that's good. See, that's the flesh thinking like that. Philip doesn't do that much, but the 
freedom of speech. No, public does. You know? And I said, Lord, oh, 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 my God. He said, me, did you not agree for this? Well, what evil have I done? So it is. You know? If you suffer for him, you will reign. But not everybody has the same gift. Not everybody has the same reward. We all have a different reward. Okay, so if any man will do his will, he shall know rather he be of God. Listen, look what it says. If any man will do his will, he shall know the, of the doctrine. Period. And look at the next word. And rather he be of God. You're going to know if you're not God or not. You will know the doctrine, and not only that, you will really know if you're a God and not a phony. Luke 8, verse 19. Okay. Then came to his, his, his mother and his brethren, and could not and could not come at him for the press. So his mother and his brethren came to him, but they could not get a, there was too many people around him. And it was told to him by certain which says, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desire to see you. The, your mother and your brethren are standing and they won't see you. And he answered and said, My mother and my brethren are, are they, are, are these that hear the word of God and you know what? I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. If you are at my place and one of my blood family comes and visits me, he takes seven steps if he wants it. If not, he can leave. Who is my mother? Who is my true brethren? Is they? Okay, now, now Jesus said that, but then I'm going to tell you also. That I mean, nobody thinks I'm giving you the whole whole world at any time. Who is my mother and who is my brethren? The one that hear the gospel. If your ears are open, that you're my mother and my brethren. Jesus says, hey, your mother wants to see you and your brethren. He says, who is my mother? Before I became born again, I had one mom. I have one family. But when I became born again, I have a spiritual family. And who is my mother? And who's my brethren? My mother and my brethren are these that hear. Hear. Hear the word of God. And not only hear now, do it. You are sorry. But they won't do that. So not only hearing, so if a person hears, the gospel is not hidden to them. Because they can hear. They have eyes to see and ears to hear. So my and if this is announced people I go and visit that I've never met before, they become right away if they're hungry and they hear. Their eyes are open, the, the word of God comes alive. That's my mother and that's my brethren. So, this is who, if you're here and you can't hear God's word and you don't do God's word, you're not my mother, you're not my brother, you're not my friend, you're nothing to me. Except if you're hungry. If you're hungry, my goodness, yes. Blessed is he that hungers. Doesn't say blessed is he that doesn't do anything wrong in his life. No. You can't straighten that up. Blessed is he that it starts with hungering for God. When you hunger for God, God's going to come to you. It will happen. Now, 22. Now, it can, now another subject a little bit. It came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. 
And D, what's that word? Launch forward. D went forward. But as D sailed, he fell asleep and they came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they will and they were filled with water and were okay. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water. So there was water coming into the ship. And were in jeopardy. I mean, they didn't look good. And they came, see, they did not have their eyes on Jesus. They did not look at Jesus. Because Jesus said, listen now, Jesus said, let's go on the other side. If you believe Jesus, when God says to you, let's go on the other side. God says, I say, I, 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 I'm working in your life. You're going to go through a hard time, but I'll see, I'll help you along. We need to believe that. He says to the disciples, let's go on the other side. Never even see this part again. Never mind all the trouble we're going to have getting there. But if you want to believe Jesus, they were going to the other side. And not worry about the, the, the storm that came in, 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 the, in the lake. You know, and this is why I say to people, it's not awful if you're a Christian, but you don't believe the Bible. You see if you're a Christian, but you don't believe it. And this is the problem with the flesh. We don't want, we don't believe. And wonder why? How come that free and this didn't happen? Hey, we sometimes we've got to wait, we've got to wait all the time. I waited for my daughter. When she was an innocent little girl, did nothing evil, nothing good. So many years and a half, she played with her dolls. The Lord showed me that one will be lots of trouble. I picked her up and I said, Lord, do something for her. And those were, I saw a vision of her future, how bad it's going to be. And last Christmas, I said, Lord, what happened to that prayer that you showed me? And I prayed. I prayed for her. Where did this go? And only now I see the result. Wow. Now, we got a problem believing to God. That he says, let's go on the other side. But they were, once they see that their fleshly circumstance, they fell apart. That sound like some of you. <clears throat> and they came to him, and they came to him, and awoke at him saying, Master, we're, 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 dead, dead. we're, we're dying in here. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and, what's that word? Raging of the water. And this it ceased. And there was calm. I'll tell you something. When you're walking into the house of somebody, a demon starts acting up, and the weight seems to be high. Don't run away. Bind the devil. Face the devil. Because God told you to go there. And when God tells me to go somewhere, the minute I walk into the place, the, it's God that's walking into the place. He told me that in sworn earth eight, ten years ago. And the demons have to back off right now. Unless I'll send them into the place. <clears throat> so which verse did I stop on? The end of 24. Okay. And then came to him, and they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, don't you care we perish? And then he arose and rebuked the wind and, and, the, 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 and the water and seas and they, they come. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? <laughs> Where is your faith? Well, you have that. Plain and simple. Where is your faith? They have that. They have no faith at all. Do you see where we're at? God wants to do things for us. He provided everything for us. We don't believe. We just don't believe. I said that to the man that came to my house. His eyes were open that day. This man, and I think it's okay for me to say this, is the 
been divorced. He's been divorced. He was with another woman before, and so was she with another man. And they don't know if they're doing right. They've been divorced for a long time. They're kept in bondage. Until, but because they're hungry for God, God sent them the light. God sent them the light. And I'll tell you something. When they saw what they saw, they marveled. Now they can help somebody else. Now they can help somebody else. And he said, how come we could not see that? Well, I said, I prayed for you on the way here that your eyes were open. And he did. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Where is your faith? Like, people don't realize they go to church all their life, but they don't believe what they think they believe. They don't know what they believe. And when we question them, they don't know. Their gospel is hidden to them. Except the ones that are hungry for God, God's going to send Peter to you. God's going to send Paul to you. God's going to send His Holy Spirit. Or God will send Adam to you. To help you. Praise the Lord for the Lord. <clears throat> where is your faith? And they, listen to this, and He said unto them, Where is your faith? And they began, and, and being afraid, Wonder one to another, what manner of man is this? You know what? I'm going to glory here a little bit myself because the Bible says I can. So if the Bible says I can, I'm going to can. I glory when I see people marveling. They marvel at what comes out of my, this mouth here. But not knowing there's a little man inside that is speaking. I marvel. You guys are going to meet him. I invited him to a Bible study that will be after that. And he's going to say he's going to come. Either it's going to be a Tuesday or a Thursday Bible study. I want you guys to meet him. This guy is nobody to see And this guy, when I talk to him, okay, he's listening. Because this guy's been 22 years in bondage. Longer than the woman that was crippled. And God set her free. She says, I can only touch, but the hand is done. And I know I will be made free. And this man, where does this guy come from? He was weeping and then I went back on Tuesday. Where is they? This week we were in Winnipeg. My wife went and ministered to somebody and I said, I'm going to see this woman. I will see women in your back. See? And she called her husband. And he was there. And boy, he didn't have a good time. Oh my God. He was weeping. They say, because of what's happening inside of them. And he said, can I invite somebody to the Bible study? Well, I said, listen, of course you can. Are the people sinners? Yeah. Okay. Are they, are they hungry for God? Yeah. And I go, they're my friend. That's why I want to hang around with. Not people that know, because the people that think they know, they'd be made blind. But the one that says they don't know, God can help them. Praise the Lord. What manner of man is this? And this will happen to you people that are right in here. When you're going to go with this city and talk to people about the Lord, they're going to say, what manner of... Look at it. I've never met a person like that. For he commands even the wind and the water and he will be. And when you're going to walk into a place, you're going to say, Satan, back up. Lord, I'm asking that you set that person free. This person is as hurt, is holding garbage. I'm asking in the name of Jesus. Jesus! He says, I'm with you when he was on earth. But he says, I'm coming back and I'm going to be in you. So when you pray for somebody, do you think it's your flesh that's praying for that person? Well, of course not. <clears throat> One time I'm sleeping uh, in a bed someplace on earth and the Lord the, the Lord the inner man wakes up my flesh and says go on the other side there's somebody in trouble go and pray for them out of the deep sleep I got up that person
person was sitting on a couch weeping. Pray for that person. The person is set free. That's what we call it. God is just awesome. The Lord is just awesome. Good. It's getting better now. Just hang in there. Matthew chapter 11. Now, this is the place. I'm not going to spend enough time on it, but I, I said it and I want to read it quick. Uh, Matthew 11 verse 20. Okay? Then he began to be brave, the city where most of his mighty works were done, before, before cause they repented not. Because they repented not. Now Jesus is in a city and he's done many miracles, and but the people don't believe. And they're seeing the move of God. And you know what? We have people today that call themselves Christians, they run after us. Oh, I think there's a good source over there. Boom, they open it. Oh, I think there's a Messiah over there. And one of these days, it will be the end of Christ, and the whole world will run after them. Okay? And they were there. They're always there. And they see his mighty word. But look what it says. They, they don't repent. They, they, they don't see, but they don't see anything wrong with them. Their heart is darkened. That's the reason that they don't us. And that God cannot. Verse 21. Woe to you. Karazim, war to thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyro or Sidon, they will have repented a long ago in Cyclops and Ashes. That is why I believe that those people were destroyed by God, just like the flood. Millions of children were destroyed in the flood that never did anything evil, never did anything good, and some of them did things that are evil. God had to destroy them. But in the day of the Lord, I believe they didn't have a chance. And those are some people. They never heard the gospel. Is God not going to be just for them? <clears throat> he says, he's saying to the Pharisee, he says, do I destroy those people so where do you stand? You think you're going to, from by what you're hearing, you think you're going to get away, stop free? If you would have heard what you're hearing, they would have repented and they never have to destroy them. But I say unto you, there will be more tolerable, tolerable for Tyro and Sidon and the day of judgment than for you. For thou, thou Capernaum, which are exalted above heaven, you are full of pride. You know people, they, they pray and they want everybody to hear them pray. They say a long prayer, they will receive a greater condemnation. You're exalted above heaven. You think you're it. You will be brought down to hell. For, for if the mighty work which have been done in you have been done in Sodom, it would have, have remained until this day. Like, I would have not destroyed them. So it's not telling you something that while you're in the week you hear the gospel, obey it. But, I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable. Okay, the word tolerable means endurance. Endurable. I checked it out, what the word meant. It means endurable. God will, will be able to, he's not saying they're not going to get saved. I'll be able to endure them more than you because you had a chance that they never had. Praise the Lord. Matthew 20. Now, Matthew 20, verse 1, it's talking about uh, <clears throat> about the, the beginning, that I, the example that I used a while ago. Okay? Didn't you not agree for a penny? That's where it is. I'm, like, I'm not going to go there, but I'm going to need a little bit, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, 20, I think, is verse 1. Okay. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a house of food, which when he went out early in the morning and hired them to go into his vineyard. So God is using an example here of people that is calling, that have ears to hear and eyes to see. And when he had agreed, look at the word agree here, with the labor for a penny a day, a penny a day, that's what he agreed for. He sent them into the vineyard. 
And he went about the third hour and saw another standing in the marketplace. So in the morning he goes, he's hard to actually go and go and have any other people. Three hours after, he says, he finds another one, he says, hey, go and go and have any other people. And then at noon, I'll give you a bed. And, and, and at three o'clock, and he quit at five or at four o'clock, he says, hey, go and have any other people. So the guy that's been working all through the day, so, oh, that's a lot of deal. But no, you agree. Me, the reason I came to the Lord is when the Lord spoke to me and said, do you want life? You, there's a chance in between life and death. I choose not eternal life. I don't care how long I have to work in the backyard. I, I want me, I want eternal life. That's what I want. And if everybody gets it, praise the Lord. But I want that. And I agree to, Lord, to obey you. And to be obedient to the vision that you're showing me. Lord, help me. And I agree. That's what I want. I want eternal life. God says, if you reject my word, I will reject you. How many times do we have to keep hearing the same thing over and over again? God says, if you reject my word, my word will be hidden to, from you. And when the time will come, I will judge you according to the word. You had it, you didn't believe it, or you say you believed it, so I'll judge you according to it. <clears throat> St. John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejects me and receives not my word as one that judges him. So, he that rejects God and has one, okay, okay, he that rejects me, God, and receives not my word. The reason he doesn't receive it is because it's hidden from him. That could be one reason. Most likely it's the reason. He is not willing to pay the price either. He that rejects me and receives not my word has one that just, he says, that one has someone that will judge him. And who is that? The word. The word will judge him. And then it says that the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge you in the last day. See? Praise the Lord. Now, before I want you to listen carefully now. that when you were under the law, you were dead. Did you not agree with me in the teaching that I spoke to you about, that before you were born again, you were dead? Lift up your hand, all of you, that I told you that. So do you believe you were dead before you became born again? Okay. So you said yes now, so you can't lie now and say no in a minute from now. I'm going to catch you. <clears throat> so how many of you agree that once you became born again, you are not under that law no more, but you are under the law of life? How many believe that? <clears throat> Is that right? Okay. So, before you were born again, you were dead. Yet, you were not an alive body, but you were dead, spiritually. You were dead. Okay? I want to talk to you, I'll show you a verse about being dead. Uh, Matthew 8, verse 22. But before that, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> There's somebody that Jesus told them, come and follow me. And, he's, and Jesus told them, come and follow me. And Jesus says to him, hey, let the dead bury their dead. Okay. So now he's talking about two things. He's talking about the dead that's in the basket. Put your ears on now. And the 
and the dead that's carrying the casket. You see that? Everybody sees that? Okay. And that's the way you were before you became born again. Matthew 10, verse 5. <clears throat> well, yeah, verse 5. Now, just stay there. God appoints 12 people. This is very important. I want to show you that God in me has fulfilled, I'm fulfilling God's word because I have raised the dead. People that are blind, they start to see. Okay? Now, he, the Lord appoints 12 people to go and preach. And then, at, in verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent them forth and commanded them. Listen, Jesus sends forth 12 people to preach. The, the ones that have the inner man alive, of course. And he says to them, go not into the way of the Gentiles or into the city of Samaritan. Enter ye not. So when you go and preach, there's some people you need to not preach to. There's some people you need to be dis have this discernment of spirit who to speak to. And he's telling them, don't go here and don't go there. And certain house, I don't want you to enter. That's why you need to be led of God who you're going to preach to. But go rather to the lost people that are hungry for the gospel. Go to the lost. Who do I want you people to talk to? The lost. The hungry. I want you to go to the lost Christian of the house of Israel. Lost, not Christian, lost people. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is a man, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devil, many freely get received. What happened to you, Ed? You were dead, Ed and Junior. Larry, you were dead. Glenda, you were dead. Edith, you were dead. All of you were dead. What happened when I came? You came alive. You resurrected from the dead. So he says to me, Adam, I'm sending you to preach. Heal the sick. Is that not what happens in our life? Which you guys have seen? Raise the dead. Will you dead or not? And then, Jew, Larry, Glenda, Edith, will you dead or not? Raise the dead. Cast out devil. Does that not happen? The people that are blind, the eyes would see. I told it last Sunday. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor. I told you who the poor were. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. This week the people were broken. The torment they've gone through. To heal the broken heart. And they're poor in spirit, but they're hungry for God. Like Melissa and people that preach. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me, he has anointed me, anointed this vessel, this new man, to preach the gospel to them that are hungry, to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance. You can be set free from where you're at. The uncovering of sight to the blind, what is that if that's not for you with your eyes to open? And I'm going to tell you something. When I walk into your place with this word, did your nice eyes did not open? Did it open or not? And you guys said, well, how come we couldn't see it? Because you were blind. You needed to be healed. And God healed you. That's what, what you see. And now he says, he appoints to 
12. Fills them with the Spirit. And he says, go and preach the gospel. Listen. When people, and verse of the children over and over and over again. When he said, heal the sick. Cleanse, raise the dead. People in the flesh needs to go to the, the, the go to cemetery and clean them up. Raise the dead. Well, you just told me how dead you were. But when you came to the light, you became alive. So what is the power that God has given us? What does the internet have? Well, I'm telling you. Because you are an eyewitness to the things I'm telling you. They were blind. And not only that, he needed a healing in his head. And I told him he wasn't sick and he laughed, laughed me to scorn. <laughs> and he was blind, he could see nothing, but the light came to him. I told you about that word last week. The light came to him, and the light shines in darkness. That's what happened to Ed and Julia. Then I met Melchior, and Kenny, and Larry, and Lando. The word of God came alive to them. They were dead, but they walked towards that light and they accepted it. They would ask me three questions in one thought. That's how they were for God. They were, they were raised from the dead. Is that not what happened? Their eyes became open. A woman came to me last summer. May they were working outside. This woman thought she could see. This woman thought she was a God. This woman did not know she was dead. But God raised her from the dead that day and healed her and healed her eyes. Not only raised her from the dead, the blind started to see. 25 years, been in a gospel, supposedly, and knew nothing from the Bible. Just and invite your pastor over. That's the confidence that I have in you. That if anybody is hungry that is blind, I'm going to come and I'm going to pray for them and their eyes will open and pop. And if you need healing, you will be healed. So, I said to the Lord, 15, 12 years, 15 years ago, I said, Lord, I don't have what the early church has. I could see I didn't have it. The Lord, I said, I want it. I want it. And when you walk into a house and people ask, the blind eyes is open. Devils are being cast out. The poor have the gospel preached to them. What a miracle. What a church, what a body of Christ that this happens to. Hallelujah. Before you heard the gospel, you were dead. You could read it, but you could not understand it. How many people have said to me, Adam, what is it? I, can't, I read and I don't understand anything in there. Because you, you're blind and you need to be healed. Some of them, some, the Lord heals them. I don't have to be there. I'm not saying I have to be there, but what I'm saying is when I walk to people's house, they, I pray for them before I even go there. And for God to open them, to, to heal them, they need a healing in their eyes. They need, a, they need to be raised from the dead. And you said you were dead. And now you said that you're alive. You're under another law and you're going to have another life. And the, the life that you now live is after the spirit, not after the old law at all. So what happened to you? You were raised from the dead. He says, Larry, Ed, all of you, go and preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out the devil. You got it for free? Give it. Praise the Lord for revelation. Praise the Lord for the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, Matthew 10, I said, verse 5. <clears throat> now, the people that he called, look what he said, look what he said. He says, go and raise the dead. Listen to me. Listen to 
be all of you. When you read there, it's people read it, he saying go and read, read, uh, go and raise the dead out of the cemetery. No, he's saying go raise the dead that are alive. How does he say it? Well, he says it right here. Watch, watch. I said that now, you heard me. Okay, here it is. And, okay, look, he chose 12, he tells them where to go, and well, go right to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, but as you go, preach. Listen to me. If it's a person that is dead, literally dead, then, and he tells you to go and preach to somebody that's literally dead, I want to see all of you in the cemetery this afternoon. Pick the one you want to do. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous what people believe? And he claimed to grow. He says, go and preach to the dead, the blind, so they can see. And once they are, they, they are resurrected from the dead, if they are sick, I will heal them. Oh, Lord, thank you for your spirit. Do you see who you are? Some people have a million dollars hidden in the bush, but they don't know it's there. They don't believe it's there. Just go get it. Somebody said to me lately, Adam, I heard your message. Why do you, why do you uh, bring yourself down? Why do you always talk against yourself? Why do you uh, feel that you're nobody? Because that's who I am. I am nobody. But God is rich. To walk into a house and people, their chains are broken off their hands. You see serpents around some of them and they're looking right in their face and Satan has them. And as you come, the devil starts to unravel and starts to slide away. That is the gospel. Go and preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel is setting the captive free. People are in church by the million and they're all in bondage. How sad. And the Bible said the pastor is supposed to feed the sheep. And instead it's the sheep feeding the pastor with money. Somebody said to me, people will not listen to you. People will not like what you say. They did not. When it came to miracle and came to feeding them, mil uh, thousands followed the Lord. But when it came to a time of trouble and the crucifixion, where were all the heroes? They were all gone. Now he says, if you are faithful, I'll put my spirit in you. Get you to be the blind. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Your eyes that you got in your head are not as important as your spiritual eyes. And when before you became born again, you, you were blind totally. You needed it. So he did a great miracle by healing your spiritual eyes and raised you from the dead. That's what you have been, you've been raised from the dead. I was talking to my wife. We you really talk to her sometimes, right? And we're having fellowship. And remember, I spoke to you one time and I told you that I was talking to a woman in a church in Saskatchewan and I was focused on her and all of a sudden, Behind me, the devil was standing behind me. Do you remember that? And he came and walked into the front, and when I made eye contact with him, I said, Who are you? He mad to us. He disappeared. Why did I see him from here? Do you know why? Because the inner man, the inner man does not have to set of eyes. The inner man is full of eyes. Remember. The inner man is full of eyes. I was not looking behind me. So I did not see it in my flesh. But the inner man is full of eyes. The inner man does not have fleshly eyes like you. He sees everywhere at one thought. Don't you want that inner man to really grow? When the word of God will change this body here, like you have never, you're going to see who, you think you've heard it all? Somebody said to me, are you running out? No, are you ever going to run out? Never. 
When the body here will see what Christ has provided for you, my goodness, you're going to see the authority that you have. Some of you, you feel that God, you know, you want more of God. You, you can't do it. And you just want more of Him. You know what? If you're hungry for God, it will happen. This church here needs to hear the full gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, it will give you authority like you never taught a man. And that's when people will say, those men walking around are walking like the, the, the God. Well, of course God is in them. And I want to read one more verse. I did not read Acts 26. And I want to read it. God tells you and tells me to go open the blind eyes. And I told you at the beginning of the message today. I, God has used me to open the eyes of the blind. Hey, Junior, every one of you in here. You see things that you never saw before because you were blind. Now here's the verse. Acts chapter that you can only wait to get to. Acts 26, verse 17, verse 18. Verse 17. Deliver them from the people and from the Gentiles uh, into whom now I send you. I'm sending you to preach. Nobody says it. To open the eyes. No, to open their eyes. I want you to go and open their eyes. When I told him his eyes were blind, you think he believed me? He thought I was on those little cigarettes, I think. <clears throat> but God says, go and open the eyes and turn them from darkness. Well, not that, not that people in the cemetery, people that are walking, but they're dead. He says, go and and open their eyes and to turn them from darkness, they're in darkness. You go and my spirit will go with you. And the one that is hungry, I will open their eyes for them. So they will resurrect from the dead and their eyes will be opened and their ears are going to be opened too. He says, to open, them, I'll send them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness unto light and from the power of Satan. When you're dead, and when you're blind, what do you have? And you're in the flesh, what, how, what you have is the power of Satan. So, if you're, the gospel is hidden from you, it's because you don't want it. You don't want it. And you want to do love darkness rather than light. But he says, he said that he will, he will open your eyes, he will get you out of darkness unto his light, and from the power of Satan, He'll get you out of it, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and henceforth among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. First Timothy, I heard chapter 3, verse 1, or chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, or chapter 4, verse 1. No, it's 4, verse 1. Now, now the Spirit explains expressively that in the last day, some shall depart from the faith. What happens when you depart from the faith? You walk in darkness. So it's possible for people to last time. They depart from the faith. And when you depart from the faith, you have no other choice. We are blind to give yourself to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits are already there to grab you. And when seducing spirit will come upon you, what will follow? You'll come out with doctrines of devil. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. It was telling me he was disturbed about a guy that was preaching, and I said to him, I said, listen, the guy says many good things. The guy has a revelation. The guy is of God. But on that subject that you're talking about, he obviously don't know. Because if there's no verse to back up what you believe, then go believe it. I didn't run the man down. I just said, hey, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Not everybody don't know everything. Neither do I know everything. And uh, this guy doesn't know everything. And when he's talking about, he, about hell, 
he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not speaking of what God showed him. He's speaking of what the world taught him. But does that mean he's not of God? No, I'm not saying that. God has used this man. God blessed him. I'm, I'm not against him. I'm for him. Ah, and that subject is wrong and I sit with him. No problem. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand.